Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another next webinar. Today, we have three great gentlemen who will discuss with us the very interesting and currently uh, up-to-date up topic, which is, is NBA or Nest Specs Action the answer for excellence in field effectiveness and experience? Uh, this webinar will take 30 minutes, and uh, I'm really glad to welcome three gentlemen who certainly can contribute in an amazing way to this webinar. So from my left to the right, please welcome Alexei Chershago. Hi, Alexei, how are you? Hi, hi Dara, I'm good, how are you? Very good, and unfortunately the camera isn't working for Alexei. So, uh, but in any case, <clears throat> we will hear very smart things from Alexei during this webinar, right? Sure. Then we have Gonzalo Lorena from uh, Vorvac Pharma. Gonzalo, same question to you, how are you? Uh, fine, thank you very much, Dario. Uh, nice to 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 be in this in this uh, webinar together with Alexei and Jose Maria. Thank you. And last but not least, Jose Maria or Chema, who is leading the customer engagement transformation at Sanofi. Chema, hope everything is good on your side. Yes, everything is good. Thank you. Um, okay. Looking forward to the weekend <laughs> already. <laughs> exactly. So thanks a lot again for joining this incredible webinar. Uh, I mean, we certainly will discuss this aspect of Nasbex action, which is a very hyped word nowadays, and uh, all pharma is moving to that direction. But uh, don't get me wrong, I think that before going there, we certainly have to, to centralize and define the fundamentals, right? And what I mean on that is that uh, in overall, commercial excellence and sales force effectiveness is actively discussed for more than 30 years, right? Uh, so how would you define the commercial excellence in today's environment and especially after COVID? Let's start, please, with you, Alexei. Dario, this is a really great question. And um, uh, I would say that um, commercial excellence for me is about three things predominantly, right? It is, uh, first of all, simplification, standardization, and innovation. Yeah, first two, uh, clear that the function is driving value creation, commercial efficiency, right? And um, uh, yeah, we are doing this by structured performance management. And here, both simplification and standardization play a very important role. Talking about last element, there is obvious contradiction between the first two and the innovation because, uh, because the, the latter usually brings disruption. And uh, for quite a long period of time, uh, customer engagement had uh, transactional character and uh, all planning and execution processes were also transactional. Over the last years, we, we have developed several fundamental changes. ATPs expected better understanding of their challenges by reps. When pharma companies do more, they are recognized and rewarded by by, by HCPs with more time and uh, attention. You remember we discussed in a couple of other meetings success challenge. And, and the last is about hybrid or blended connections. HCPs most value connections that blend the best of virtual and in person, assuming that we are focusing on, on the needs of, of their patients. Significantly um, high degree of personalization makes the whole planning and execution process is non-linear and, uh, and innovation driven by commercial excellence goes beyond engagement itself and requires uh, COMEX teams play bridging roles among medical, marketing and sales colleagues and even take over responsibilities, I would say around capability building, which traditionally were with the HR colleagues for sure except for uh, customer facing uh, functions. And uh, last but not least, it's um, uh, change management, right? Standing in the value chain right before touch point between the rep and the physician. Comex quite often should insource change management capabilities to, to ensure that uh, innovative solutions can be implemented by, uh, by countries, by our markets. That's interesting. Uh, let me just ask one additional question based on your input. Do you see that currently due to this transformation process that commercial is actually leading the transformation process and somehow trying to embed medical affairs, digital and some other pharma functions into that process? 
And as a final outcome and goal to achieve this customer experience, this holy grail of, of engagement. Answering the first part of your question, I would I would say it is more being um, an engine between different functions because there are there are areas where commercial excellence is not leading, but we are coordinating this transformation process. Let's put it like this, yeah. Um, talking about um, customer centricity and um, actually uh, unparalleled customer experience, which is now kind of hybrid uh, hygiene factor, right? I think that uh, talking about talking about final objective, customer satisfaction now, customer experience now is one of the most critical uh, critical elements in our operation simply because. Uh, without without um, this one, we can hardly get access to our customers, and the whole interaction uh, cannot take place. Certainly it makes sense. Thanks a lot, Alexei. Gonzalo, let's move to you. And uh, again, coming back to the first initial question, how do you see the role currently in commercial excellence, and what actually changed uh, after COVID and during the pandemic? Yeah, thank you very much, Dario. Um, I think it's and connected with Alexei was mentioning. I think uh, for me is to building the right commercial capabilities for that company, yeah, which can be completely different from a big pharma company to a medium size or a small pharma company. This it it depends on on the size of of the company, the complexity of the portfolio, etc. But we cannot lose the the uh, uh, the, the focal point about this is a change management process because if you, if you are trying to take uh, basically all the you know taking a couple of books and say I will apply this this and this no it will never work this is a process you need to set up a an, an strategy align it with the with the general strategy of the company connect with the other departments as you were mentioning like like uh, the medical department even a supply chain, you know, etc. Uh, obviously, marketing, sales, all the areas connected, yeah, and develop a series of initiatives to to build these uh, advanced uh, commercial capabilities uh, in the company. But this obviously depends on the on the stage of uh, of the of, of the company and how fast the company is willing to move. You know? And that's the connection what I was mentioning between. The general the uh, general strategy of the company and how the strategy of commercial excellence uh, needs to connect uh, yeah in any case this obviously changed and was accelerated by by covid no in terms of uh, everybody's trying to find the, the magic the magic ball that they will give us all the answers and that you what you can implement to to keep the the revenues and, and continuous growing that, that we need no and then yeah is try how prepared is the company, as you know, in terms of digitalization, in, in terms of uh, uh, the, the proper segmentation, how how fast the, uh, the countries are evolving. And as you know, in global positions, also not all the countries are at the same level. You have more advanced countries, others are, they are beginners, yeah? and then you need to measure yeah, in a different way in some cases. Yeah? Uh, uh, how is the change management process and how it will be a successful implementation of all your initiatives. Yeah, that's very good input. Maybe we can also add like a, we even have local preferences of uh, our customers, right, which also can vary from uh, compared to, to a different market. I mean, the very same customer isn't thinking in the same way in Germany, like for instance, I know in Serbia, for example, right, and uh, somehow we have this impression that uh, we, we apply this global strategy from company X and pushing it across all markets, right? Not asking the markets and customers what they actually need and want, right? So it is a change management, fully agree with you, Rangal, yeah. Sure. Chema, coming back to you, uh, I mean, listening to those two great gentlemen and their insights, uh, and especially I would appreciate your input since you're not a pure, let's say, commercial guy, uh, you're much more related to customer engagement, transformation, customer experience, which certainly has a huge impact on commercial at the end, right? So how do you see this this uh, overall mix of, of answers which we heard uh, so far? Yeah, I let me. I was taking some notes because uh, some of the things that you mentioned they reflect my experience and also discussions I have uh, had with other uh, people in the industry. Uh, I think that in commercial excellence, 
if I remember my former times when I started my career, because you won't believe it, but I, I, I've been in the industry for 20 years. I know I look younger, but I have been already for some time. <laughs> and in the very beginning, I, I, I had some uh, experience in field force effectiveness. And I remember that back in the day, it was actually all about frequency and coverage, right? It was very, it was, it was a formula already established. You cover certain amount of doctors, you cover certain amount of the universe, you visit them with this specific frequency. And I even remember that back in the day, we knew exactly how many visits do you, did you need as a sales rep to convince the doctor to prescribe. It was an average, I think, six or eight visits. I think I remember that. Uh, and, and everybody was safe. It was, a, it was more or less like a, a, a comfort zone that you could apply the formula and boom, you wouldn't, you wouldn't care for anything else, right? And, um, and I think that with digital, the first approach that happened was that we tried to put that model into digital and I still see it. I still hear conversations in the industry about the, uh, measuring number of digital touch points. What, the, what, is, what should be the frequency of digital touch points to convince a doctor plus face-to-face -face plus hybrid? So I still see that we're trying to fit, fit that mindset of frequency and coverage into the digital environment. And I still, and I don't think in my, in my perspective, I think we should go more into the, into what Alexi was saying in the beginning about customer satisfaction, right? So shifting the mindset because we, we were caring about covering the right amount of doctors to convince them. Now we should, the, the shift of mindset and the change management that Gonzalo was mentioning is it's about shifting from that frequency and coverage to uh, is really keeping the customer satisfied, going to drive more um, uh, pre more pre patients being diagnosed. And I'm speaking already in terms in, in the concept of a, a marketeer, right? Is this going to mean for the marketeer to identify more patients? Is this going to, is customer satisfaction going to provide a better market share? Or is uh, better customer satisfaction going to pro provide that the late adopters in the curve, in the, in the adoption ladder, are going to start accelerating the usage of our mechanism of action? Uh, and I don't think we know that yet. I don't because because we haven't got to that point where we can make that correlation yet as an industry. Um, so for some something that I, I have seen is that people tend to do it more like a checklist. Uh, like for example, you know, it's like, oh, I have to I have to send 10 emails per month, then get it. I, I will get my incentive or whatever it is that I need to achieve. Uh, but uh, the more we put focus on um, on um, I help well this is this is what I, this is the ultimate message that I have been sending uh, recently it's about that I think that the point we need to uh, identify and make sure from the commercial excellence perspective is uh, we need to help the reps understand and also the rest of the company understand that personalization and customer experience has has been in the in the pharma industry in the job of the rep uh, in the individual so some reps were better, others not that 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 good, etc. But they knew their customer. They knew how to talk to a different per or a doctor who would be only interested in going to a congress. Other, so they knew how to adapt the speech. They knew when not to visit them, etc. So we are what we're doing now is to industrialize that into uh, the processes and getting the digitalization and ultimately measuring the customer engagement, which is uh, something that uh, I don't think all commercial teams have really understand understood uh, yet mm, absolutely i mean yes, like, like you said they are the face of the company right they are the first touch point if yes in most cases right not in every case but uh, in most cases they are so if you don't get it right then of course we will go we will go wrong <laughs> long story short good let's speak about the nba uh, we all know of course what this acronym stands for so we don't uh, we'll explain that uh, but my question would be, uh, I mean, it's a very, very hyped term, especially a couple of months, couple of uh, even a year or so. Uh, and uh, what actually is the role of MBA in commercial excellence? And how do you see this MBA whole story will, will evolve? Or on bottom line, do we really need MBA as a tool or is it just a new fancy term like AI a couple of years ago? Uh, let's start with you, Gonzalo. Okay. So basically, um... I think you need to have the the basics well uh, well builded, yeah, and 
once you have this, you can go further. No? Also, if you are in a, just working the traditional channel or not even not uh, working in the digital environment right now, or you are not working in the uh, multi-channel environment, yeah, this this could be like a, okay. Why not to continue doing what we are doing? Well, simple, simple like that is, uh, yeah, you would obtain the best for words, no? Uh, the, so the same or words. Uh, what I'm trying to explain here is uh, next, uh, next uh, best action is, is it will uh, will be part of the process and the in the promotion side of of each of our sales reps, even though uh, depending uh, again on. How mature is the, the the company, and how mature is your sales team you know, to to learn how to follow this process and address the needs of of the customers? You know? Because each customer is different. Each customer has their own needs, and they don't they don't want that you are coming with the same speech ten times. You know? They need uh, they want that you are connected with their needs, you know? and then how this MBA yeah, process will help you as a sales rep you know, and connect better with, with the customer. That's the, uh, that's the key element here. But for this, you need to set up, obviously, on a strong base yeah, of different initiatives and also, obviously, have your, your, your CRM in, in place with, with, uh, with the CLM and other different uh, elements that you can work together. To define what is the next action that I need to have with this customer to move, as Chema was mentioning, uh, across the adoption ladder, you know, um, this customer to satisfy the needs that they are expecting from you. So, what the answers that they are expecting from you as a sales rep? Mm, that's very interesting. I would especially bold to the the sentence which you said uh, to connect with the customer needs because again. Sometimes it's so simple, we don't need tech, we just need to speak with the customer and ask, okay, what do you need? So ask your customer first, right? That, that's so simple that it can be more simple, right? Chema? Yeah, I, um, I, was, um, I was actually recently speaking with a friend uh, who, who, was, who is about to give a speech, uh, a lecture on this, um, because I, uh, I agree with you, Gonzalo, we need to fix the basics and uh, and from from my point of view, we even need to upskill ourselves and really understand uh, what is really next best action. Because I think it's many people hear it and and it's a blurry concept and it, it has become a buzzword. Um, so I have been doing some some extra work and uh, trying to get educated from from people. Uh, and this friend was actually giving me an example, which is going to help me illustrate my point of what I'm going to say. Uh, she was telling me that. Netflix, for example, it's always the best example, right? Netflix, all the data. Um, and she was telling me that, uh, for example, in, in Netflix, if you are a person who watches a lot of romance, for example, and then Netflix and engine is going to recommend you an, an additional, not a romance uh, movie, but maybe they're going to recommend you Stranger Things. You know, Stranger Things is a famous series, etc. cetera. But what, net, what the engine is going to do is going to suggest uh, uh, a picture in your on your screen showing the romance part of uh, the, maybe the couple of one of the teenagers that are in the Stranger Things to increase your your um, conversion, right? Um, so th they do they they do these kind of things. However, even though imagine the amount of data that Netflix has, mm -hmm. uh, and yet this engine doesn't work 100% uh, all the time, and uh, they actually. They actually, uh, they, she was showing me an example that if you see the movie Bugs, you know, the, this, uh, the ants, the, this old movie, uh, you can get recommendations to watch The Human Centipede, which is actually a horror movie. <laughs> so <laughs> it's in, in, so taking that into consideration on elaborating on your point, Gonzalo, on, on fixing the basics, uh, I think that from my, my most recent conclusion about this is, Yes, we will need some kind of engine like this, uh, but the basics that we need to start is on getting enough data that it's not biased. Uh, because I think that all the, in general, the, 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 the data that we generate from the campaigns in, in the industry, it's mostly a linear journey, which I have mm -hmm. spoken before about. It's a linear journey about 
uh, inviting doctors, reminding them to come to a certain website or e webinar, etc. And it's all about it's it's somehow biased. Uh, and on and also on the other side, it's uh, I don't think it's enough yet. Uh, so I wonder if uh, so within the basics, uh, getting the data, getting enough data, uh, starting a small. Uh, if I may, there's also another example that I have uh, when I was doing this self-education process. Uh, an article for, from Harvard Business Review. On um, this company, it doesn't say what kind of business they have, but it's uh, they were um, they 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 implemented an artificial intelligence engine that was actually reading the emails, and uh, but depending on the email, the, sorry, they are, the AI was sending emailings to the customers, to potential customers. And then reading the emails and classifying classifying them as potential customers. And then once they had the potential customers, they would send them to the field force. And uh, and this this was a uh, if you may, this could be a, like a next best action, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Like a like a first step of a next best action. And in this case, this company had so many potential customers and so many sales that they had to hire even more sales representatives to cope with the amount of of people that the the AI was identifying. Uh, so starting a small like this and having the proof of what AI can do for you can actually take you faster and deploy your system faster. Um, and uh, and yeah, I think we should start small and mm -hmm. doing different exercises and uh, and and, get, and start getting that data and mm -hmm. those data for our own engines. So starting small and then scaling. That's always. I would say the yes. base was, of course, in many cases, an uh, uh, issue to implement at the end. Also, great learning, low box movie for my kids. So thanks, Chema, for that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Bottom line. <laughs> Alexei? First of all, a great example, Chema. I like it, I like it a, a lot. And um, thinking about our ultimate goal, this is about probably successful engagement, right, between a pharmaceutical company and our customers. Therefore, to, to answer the question, Dario, we should start with another one, right? What does successful engagement look like for, exactly. for the modern web? And uh, the, first, the first element here, for sure, it is emotional intelligence, right? And within empathy, one can hardly be truly customer-centric without clear understanding of customer needs, right? Secondly, we actually should assume a natural Two way ongoing conversation between ACPs and uh, medical representatives, right? High responsiveness to customer requests is a critical success factor here. And um, taking in, into the consideration challenges with access to ACPs, right? What we discussed in the very beginning. Rep should play a role of solution provider, right? Then they, they, then they have a good chances to keep relationship with, uh, with their customers. We didn't go small touch point. Um, also, successful engagement uh, is driven by ability of rep to distill complex information into, so to say, simple messages and ability to use it efficiently, you know, when, when they're talking to, 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 to the customers or um, sharing some recommendations. This is exactly the point where I think we should slowly move step by step to ensure that all transactional pieces all transactional activities, they supposed to be automated to ensure that um, customer facing colleagues, they have enough space for emotional intelligence and for the elements which um, can hardly be automated. The border between the two, what to consider transactional and what not transactional, is probably a gray zone, you know, and this is what we need to understand. We should also, we should also do not forget about um, uh, limitations of technologies and uh, data incompleteness, like Chema mentioned, for sure, right? We should be really careful and consider um, NBAs, nothing else than um, additional element, something supporting uh, decision making process. You know, not we, we can hardly substitute a rep by, uh, or a rep should not follow, you know only uh, NBA recommendations. Here we should be we should be really careful. Key ultimate goal again is successful engagement and moving from um, uh, homogeneous face-to-face uh, -face interactions, more transactional interactions 
now when I have a lot of different channels, a lot of different pieces of, of content, right? To be able to identify relevant um, channel and relevant content for our customers, I think uh, we should definitely support uh, customer facing colleagues in the field with uh, different types of NBA, NBA tools. The risk, the risk here is uh, actually to, 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 to push them into, into a wrong, wrong direction. This is how I can see uh, NBA topic. Mm, makes perfect sense. Uh, last but not least, analytics. I think, okay, it's certainly quite, uh, it's too soon to speak about the, the KPI analytics from MBA, but how do you imagine what would be a relevant KPI analytics which comes out of the MBA and which can be actually implemented, like Alexa said, to deliver and to align with the customer's expectation? Let's start with you, Chema. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, I am. Um, I uh, like like I was saying. I think it should go. Uh, we don't have the answer, and we don't have the one size fits all. I would say. Uh, coming back to what Gonzalo was saying in the beginning, uh, because um, I don't think we have figured it out. Uh, but I think it would go into the into the, the into describing something like this. This is probably a futuristic scenario, uh, but this, in, in my mind, this should be something like this. Uh, you should have an understanding of if your customer is how to what extent your customer is satisfied at the current state, right? You need you need to you should you should understand if you uh, you should have a KPI that tells you this customer it's. Um, uh, it's it's at this stage, and this is how the, uh, the evolution of that uh, um, experience of that customer has been, or uh, or satisfaction of that customer has been. So satisfaction over time, and then you should have also a combination of how does that uh, customer prefer to be uh, engaged at that specific point in time? Because again, preferences on engagement or channel preference. It's not a fixed target, um, and I'm sorry that I'm going to have to elaborate a little bit more. But this is again something that I've been telling recently. Sometimes I see that marketing teams think that channel preference is a, it's a fixed situation that they can just do as a market research or buy a report, and that's it. They have the channel preference figured out, uh, but it's about the channel preference that is constantly moving. So uh, customer satisfaction over time plus channel preference at that specific moment in time, plus the adoption of the doctor, where the doctor is, uh, even if you're, because even if your doctor is highly satisfied, you are still don't have a doctor as, a, as, a lead, as an early adopter, then all those should be your KPIs to tell you what you do next. Um, well, and, you, and you, can, you can add as, as, as much, uh, um, say, uh, complexity, uh, to the, you can say what kind of content does the doctor prefer? Is it video or? But that is, uh, that would be next level for me. At least those three. So a channel of preference at that moment of time, customer satisfaction at that moment of time, and um, and that option another should be the guiding principles of how do we uh, engage with the doctors and what determines our, our next best action. Uh, and again. Maybe in the future, when we have all the technology, it would become much more complex and more, much more sophisticated to include all the variables possible. Uh, but yeah, I, I think we're still far from that. Yeah, very interesting. Thank you, Chema. Alexei? Um, I would say that, uh, let me start with the uh, analytics in general, where even now we can see obvious transition, right, from pure descriptive KPIs and dashboards to predictive and prescriptive analytics, right? And uh, there are different areas of uh, AI application here with a quite different adoption level and uh, satisfaction of end users. Therefore, um, a transition and development of different uh, NBA-related KPIs, they should be aligned uh, actually with the ability of, of our organizations to support proper education of back office and customer facing colleagues in the field and proper level of adoption for all these technologies. Look guys, if you look at R&D for example, right, AI techniques even now I applied across whole drug development process, nobody's questioning this. 
it, it helps speed up drug discovery, build predictive models, as well as, I don't know, discovery and identification of biomarkers, right? We have solid progress in our methods and the line, everything is aligned to, to, to our expectations here. When we are talking about commercial in general, I believe we are a bit behind here, behind other functions. And, um, and expectations around ability of AI uh, and machine learning, you know, algorithms, I be too high from my perspective. You know, because thinking about AI, we, we expect that we put all the data into algorithm and uh, as an outcome, uh, after we run it, uh, we can see, you know, perfect results, you know, and uh, we would expect that um, reps can uh, follow, you know, outcomes of um, and be recommendations and, uh, you know, everything, everything would work like, like we expect. Unfortunately not. I think that exists in analytical solutions there. Uh, they can rather support decision-making process and uh, even adoption of these technologies might uh, take some time for, for, for business colleagues. Um, I'm talking about specific KPIs, I think that if you would like to run customer-centric operation, then uh, together with most probably some uh, input-related uh, elements, we should bring some behavioral um, KPIs and definitely, uh, like, like Chema mentioned, customer customer satisfaction for sure. Maybe quite quite advanced level of measuring customer satisfaction, uh, you know, but without without um, initial attempts to uh, to understand what does it mean best alternative, what is best action, you know, what does it mean best action without defining um, defining clear targets for quality of our engagement with uh, healthcare uh, practitioners for the level of satisfaction we would like to reach we can hardly we can hardly identify relevant relevant kpis and here from my perspective it might be quite interesting to check what is going on in uh, in other industries most probably pharma is not the only industry stepping into this um uh, trying trying to resolve this uh this challenge, this problem, right, and bringing bring experience from 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 other domains might might help us a lot. Mm. Thanks a lot, Alexa. Gonzalo. Well, uh, my point will be in the following sense: is basically what we want is to achieve customer satisfaction. Yeah, that will reflect in improving now the the revenues of the company and obviously the the uh, having uh, uh, the patients following the treatments, etc. But this is the output, and obviously we can measure some part of the output. But also we will need to measure the activity or some kind of the interaction, so all the steps that we are doing to arrive to this output uh, expected. No? Means at the same point we need to define at least, I guess, between five to seven some KPIs that we need to define in terms of uh, uh, activities or activations that we are doing, thinking just an example, like a key account management manager, no? I need to do this, 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 but now with a combination of MBA, we can do from different channels or different activities, etc. And uh, achieving all these activities supposedly will give us the outputs that we expected means from one side we will need to define between five to seven KPIs uh, about execution, yeah? and the other side we need to combine with the respective, expected outputs. And, and that's the combination of both that will give us the right KPIs uh, and that you need to analyze. In, in the middle of all of this is obviously yeah, all the analytics data that you can uh, manage and obviously have the, capa the capacity to use to manage and use this data for the benefit, obviously, of, of your customers as well. Fantastic, gentlemen. Thanks a lot. It was really a great webinar. So thank again uh, to Alexei Gonzalo and to Jose Maria. Great pleasure. We will publish this webinar on our official YouTube channel. Take very good care and looking to the next one. Thank you so thank much. You very much. For engaging discussions today, guys. Have a great day and see you in the next session. Bye. Every day. Bye.